you very much for coming. Thank you very much, and thank you for the kind invitation. It's very nice to have a chance to come and talk to you about organon chips in cardiac applications. So, as mentioned, I'm coming from Finland, so University of Tampere, and the faculty is the Faculty of Medicine and Health Technology. Tampere is located in the central part of Finland, and actually we have now a pretty new university there, because there were previously two different universities, and now from the beginning of this year they merged, and now we are together with the technical university and the medical, and of course the social sciences as well. But I am a coordinator of the Center of Excellence in Body on a Chip Research. This is a, a multidisciplinary research consortium. We have six different research groups, and we are combining many fields of science from engineering, microfluidics, microfabrication, biomaterials, sensor technology, to stem cell biology, and also clinical medicine. We were nominated as a center of excellence in the beginning of last year, and we have the funding until 2025. So, as mentioned, I'm also a senior researcher in the Heart Group, which is led by Professor Katrin Aaltosetela, and we have, for the past 15 years, worked with stem cell-derived cardiomyocytes, and after iPS cell technology was invented, we have worked with that technique pretty much so. That's why we have a great visitor here in the picture. So, Shinya Yamanakam was visiting us last year, so he is the inventor of the whole iPS technology. So, the basic idea in our group is that we want to model genetic cardiac diseases as well as other sclerosis with help of iPS cells. So, we pretty much reprogram new iPS cell lines. We differentiate them into the cardiomyocytes as well as hepatocytes, and then we have pretty heavy electrophysiological lab where we then study the function of the differentiated cells. And because we produce quite a lot of data, we have been collaborating also with the IT people and have tried to develop these automated analysis and, and methods that we can really easily then for example, analyze the calcium imaging data. But, <clears throat> but the topic of today. So first I will go a little bit through about the motivation and background behind organ on a chip technology. And then I will give you a few examples in overall samples and then how this, method, how this methodology can be utilized in cardiac research and of course the last thing that I want to concentrate on is how we utilize it and what are the applications that we are developing in our center of excellence. As we discussed also yesterday that there is a great need for human in vitro tissue models. So we need to study the development of the tissues, their function, diseases, and also trauma in human, with human cells. Of course, this will serve the basic research, but also drug discovery and toxicology, as well as the personalized medicine applications in the future. Nowadays, we will pretty much use animal models, and we all know that we are different from mouse, we are different from rat. So there is something that we need to think and try to replace the animal models, because then we could actually narrow the gap between preclinical and clinical studies and model, for example, the drugs with human cells. Well, human cell cultures or human-based cell cultures have been pretty much used for a long, long time already in different kind of applications. And, and even though that, that they are pretty simplified models, they have produced quite a lot of nice data. So traditionally, cells are cultured in 2D on a cell culture disk. So they just attach to the bottom of the cell culture well. Pretty much single cell types have been used, so, and the cell culturing and the function of the cells has been monitored easily by 
imaging or batch clamping, so the cells have been e easy to, to access. However, we know, especially from the stem cell derived cardiomyocytes, that the maturation level of the cells is low, and if we culture them like this, they are not at their natural state. Our cells are not in 2D, our organs are not in 2D, so we need to go a little bit more further than that. And of course, when we have only one cell types in a dish, there are limited number of cell, to cell contacts. And if we think about cardiac disease modeling, for example, if we want to study arrhythmias, if we have single cells there and there, it's not so easy to study them at that point. And of course, disease modeling in general requires multicellular culture platforms that we can get more detailed information. But pretty much can be done with these cells, and they are actually pretty beautiful. Cardiomyocytes have their nice sarcomere structure, even though it's not that organized that it should be the structure of the cells in 2D. It's not the rod like nature like, but anyway, they are pretty beautiful, and we have also can see the bionucleated nature of them as well. As I mentioned, we want to go further from these 2D cultures in the 3D, and they, that way build more advanced cell cultures. We want to use hydrogels or scaffolds that we can really go in the 3D. Otherwise, we can use topographical tools if we want to, for example, align the cells and make this kind of directional cultures. We want to mix cell types, and we, if we have mixed cell types in a 3D culture, of course, we need then perfusion to deliver nutrients and then take out the waste products of the cells. And in addition to that, we need uh, this kind of gym for the cells because the cells, they feel a lot of different kind of stimuli in the body, so we want to mimic that as well with these dynamic cultures. So in that shear stress, stretching uh, other mechanical stimulation like pressure to the cells as well as electrical stimulation. But well, if we want to accomplish this wish list of what I mentioned here now, then we are having a lot of challenges. Oops, sorry. In the, in the assessing the cells or assessing the functionality of the cells and also in the cultural conditions. For example, if we have in three-dimensional cultural con conditions with multiple cell types, we have to optimize the cell culture media because all the cell types need their specific cell culture media. So we have to compromise in that. If we have three-dimensional cultures, we have challenges in imaging because, for example, in the 2D cultures, you just with the normal microscope, you can, which you can find from every lab, you can image the cells and check that they are okay. But if they have three-dimensional cultures, the imaging is more challenging, as well as the assessment of cell functionality. We can do patch clamping with 2D cultures pretty easily, but how we do that then in in 3D. And the simple analysis for gene and protein expression, they can be challenged as well because sometimes the scaffolds are that, that we cannot really easily get the cells out of the scaffold, so we cannot slice them that well and there can be challenges there as well. But one way to work with these challenges and, and so, uh, solve them out is to use these kind of advanced cell culture platforms, which we can then call organ on a chips. In these chips, we can culture multiple cell types in this kind of dynamic environment. And I took the one example from Emulate. Here is the, their one of their chips. Emulate is one of the pioneers in the organ on a chip field. They have commercialized many kind of chips already. And here is actually, I'm, I'm not sure is this the first one, but at least one of the first that they have accomplished. So if we 
look at it a little bit more in detail. So in here we can have, have in one chip we can have different kind of compartments. We have here the upper compartment where we don't have actually the cell culture media. We have the airflow there and we have lung epithelial cells underneath. And then we have the membrane and and on the other side of the membrane, we can have endothelial cells. And the lower compartment is then filled with cell culture media. So with this system, we can mimic the air-liquid interface, how the alveoli work. And in addition to these two compartments, they have also inserted these kind of vacuum channels there, well, which can be used to stretch the membrane and stretch the cells on, on, on the membrane and that way mimic how the lung alveoli works. The chip is transparent, so when it's in use, it can be also imaged at the same time. And this is how it looks like when it's in action. So we have different kind of tubings for the airflow, for the media flow, and of course for the vacuum. So pretty much stuff in a very, very small piece of BDMS. But then if we want to go one step further from that, not only, imit, not only mimic the function of the lung, but if we want to mimic, for example, how the drug metabolites in our liver and how does the metabolites affect the human heart, for example, then we can use these body and chip models, which are multi-organ models, and we can have multiple cultures that mimic tissues in the same dish. Maybe this chip, uh, sorry, I always press one wrong button. With 10 organs, it can be pretty complicated, but actually these kind of chips are already commercially used and they are, they are from tissues from Berlin and they are working with the pharma companies and actually they have a commercialized couple of um, kind of chips where you can culture either two to four different kind of tissues and model model how the they in the, how they work together and whatever you want to do with them. Then I took the example of the heart on a chip here. There are multiple ones there, but I think this is one that nicely is a nice example of what kind of clues we can actually, clues can we incorporate into one chip. So basically this platform is a combination of this kind of enhancing cues for the cells which give a topography for the cells. So maybe hopefully you can see that there are these kind of grooves in the structure which align the cells. So that the cardiomyocytes align along these grooves. Then they have this kind of uh, air crowd here, which they can use to stimulate a pace the cells. And that's way, that way gives them stimuli and the cells are getting more mature when they work more. Then there is also functional measurements here as well. So as you saw, this is contracting. So we can then calculate how well the the beating rate of the first tissue as well as the force because we, they know the, me the mechanical properties of the material. And here they were. And this was actually published a couple of years ago and from Kevin Kit Parker's lab, which is one of the pioneers of the organ and chip technology as well. And this is pretty busy slide, but I wanted to show this because here you can see that what kind of different techniques can be utilized in organ on chips and what kind of collaboration is needed because they use here the 3D printing. So pretty much engineering is needed as well. The electrodes are here. So more, much more expertise is needed in, than just the basic 2D cultures. I can do the 2D cultures, but I cannot do this on by myself. So a lot of collaboration and a lot of different kind of expertise is needed in this field of science. 
But then, if I may go to our own approaches, so the center of excellence that we are working, that we have, is working with these kind of body on a chip platforms that we have few aims for. So we want to have in a chip multiple tissues, but we have want to them to be also vascularized and innovated and that way connected. We want to fully control the environment that the cells live in. So we want to know that what is the, exactly the temperature in the area of cell culture area and the oxygen level and the pH, for example. The system that we have built is modular, so we can put the pieces that we want to have in there. For example, if we want to uh, video image the cells, then we will put them under the microscope and have the video camera there. Or if we want to measure the, the electrical activity of the cells with the multi electrode array, then we just insert that there. And if there is something else, then we can change the modules in the platform. And in that addition to that, we have also a group working with computer modeling. So not only that we can, can stimulate how the temperature is going on in the, in the machinery, but also we can model the function of the cells. They have actually made an in silico model of cardiomyocytes, IPS-derived cardiomyocytes. So maybe in the future we can in silico work with the cells as well, produce some data in the lab and then go a bit further from it on silico then. We work with stem cells, so from IPS cells to, to human adipose-derived mesenchymal cells, and here is the menu of the cell types that we can use, that can differentiate in our consortia. And because we have the biomaterial group there as well, we can work with the new novel biomaterials to have this kind of innovative and vascularized tissue in 3D. The the core of the platform is this mini incubator and there we can, as I mentioned, we can, with this hat we can control the gas composition. So if we want to mimic hypoxia or ischemia, we can then do it with this small, small incubator and we can also control the temperature and other, other variant like oxygen and temperature and pH and measure them from the cell culture area. We can change the cell culture well. We can have this kind of single cell pair or we can have different compartments for different tissues. And if we want, we can then change the platform underneath and have a like this kind of multi electrode array there if you want to check the functionality of the cells. And the system is fully transparent, uh, which enables effective imaging and video recording as well. So then I will give you a one example what we have done with this system already at the, at the moment with, the, with this platform. Here's just an overview. Maybe you are familiar with IPS cells, but anyway, what we do. So we have patients from, from the Tampere University Hospital. We have, I think we have at the moment a little bit more than 300 lines in freezer. So we have program lines from nearly 2,000 patients and we have more than one line of each of them. And of course we don't characterize them all, but those are pretty much characterized the 300 lines that we have. So in Finland, we have the common healthcare system, so which enables us to know quite much of the clinical data behind the lines. So we know, for example, if they are from the same family, that what kind of symptoms the, the patients have and have their symptoms, are they asymptomatic? And then we can also derive cell lines from the family members that don't have the mutation that it's altering the patient to genetic cardiac disease. Here is the list, one list of our, our cell lines. So 
We started with Gongyut syndrome, and then we have lines from CPVT with different guys. All the mutations are pretty much the founder mutations that are common in Finland. But this is one list that have, we have. The old lines are not here. But in addition to this, this is, this is lines. We have also control lines that we can use as a healthy controls. But also nowadays we have been also genetically modifying with Cas9 system, isogenic lines for, for the patient lines. So we can go and correct the mutation that the patient have and that way make a specific control line for, for that line. But one example what we have done with these cells is that we have modeled I mean A related direct cardiomyopathy. So we have, have had patients from with the Finnish founder mutation, we have reprogrammed IPS cell lines from them and then differentiated cardiomyocytes. And then we have cultured the cells in the platform and analyzed them with in hypoxia stressing with and with media video microscopy and multi electrode array. So we have used our mini incubator, we have accessorized the the incubator with the MEA platform, and then we have taken simultaneous video and MEA, and then we could have, have checked the functionality of the cells during the hypoxic events. So this is just a few examples of the results of the paper that we have. It has been published a little bit well, during before this year, actually, it came out in the springtime. But we wanted to see that are the cells, the diseased cells with the, with the mutation, are they more prone to ischemic stress? So we saw that when we did multiple uh, hypoxia rounds and we saw that the beating rate decreased every time, but it never reached the starting level anymore. So according, when we compared to the control, the beating rate of the disease line was lower and it didn't reach the starting level anymore. Other thing that we did is that we did immunohistochemistry chemistry for the, for to see the sarcomere structures and we wanted to see that does the sarcomere structure get damaged during hypoxia and we saw actually that the, with the disease lines this is the case of the sarcomere start to degrade during ischemic stress. But this was just like a brief, brief example of what we have done. Okay, but as a conclusion, organ and chips are complex tissue cell culture platforms, and where the cells and tissues are cultured in a microfluidic device with integrated sensors. And this is a combination of engineering and cell biology and organ chips are bio more biomimicking than normal 2D cultures. We have, can have multicellular cultures there, biomimicking environment, and we can also have the tissue structures vascularized and innovated. We expect that this technology will be utilized in addition to basic research, also in disease modeling, drug discovery, and personalized media applications. And I still want to emphasize that in this field, especially the multidisciplinary collaboration, it's very much needed. Then I want to acknowledge the, our Center of Excellence team and our, our funding sources, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you.